Amniotic fluid is formed by a specific mechanism in pregnancy. In this video, first I will explain how amniotic fluid is formed normally and then one by one I will clarify how the different causes of polyhydramnios which we discussed before increase the amount of liquid around the baby. So the topic of our discussion today is pathophysiology of polyhydramnios. If you want to watch more videos about polyhydramnios, go to the links in the i button in the top right corner of this video. So how amniotic fluid is formed normally? In the first half of pregnancy, amniotic fluid is derived from fetal and possibly maternal compartment by diffusion of water and solutes. Water and solutes freely towards the fetal skin and may diffuse through amnion and chorion as well. Thus, the amniotic fluid in early gestation is a dialysate that is identical to the fetal and maternal plasma but with a lower protein concentration. By the second uh, trimester, the fetal skin become keratinized, making it impermeable to further diffusion. At this time, the fetus contributes to amniotic fluid volume and composition almost exclusively through fetal urination. So what are the inputs and outputs in amniotic fluids? The input into amniotic fluid is from the fetal urine and lung fluid. Output from the amniotic fluid includes fetal solving and intramembranous flow to the placenta and to the fetus. Now this picture also shows what produces amniotic fluid and what absorbs the amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid is produced by placenta, membranes, fetal kidneys and lungs. Amniotic fluid is absorbed by solving and absorption by the fetal lungs, skins and GI tract. So far, we have discussed how amniotic fluid is formed normally. Now, we will talk about the different causes of polyhydramnios, how they can cause the polyhydramnios. So, how maternal condition cause increased liquor volume? First of all, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Maternal high blood sugar can cross the placenta, causing fetal hyperglycemia, which results in increased osmotic diuresis which subsequently leads to polyuria. Secondly, rhesus and other blood group isoimmunization. When a mother has Rh negative blood type and the baby has Rh positive blood group, this can cause the baby to develop a type of anemia which can in turn lead to polyhydramnios in order to compensate the hypovolemia due to anemia. Thirdly, exposure to medications such as lithium leads to fetal diabetes insipidus, resulting in polyhydramnios. Next come the placental causes of polyhydramnios. Placental causes include tumors such as chorioangiomas. One possible explanation of the polyhydramnios noted in chorioangioma is that there is potential that chorioangioma compress the umbilical vessels leading to fluid accumulation. How fetal conditions cause polyhydramnios? First of all, TTTS, twin to twin transfusion syndrome, results in increased amniotic fluid in the recipient twin and decreased amniotic fluid in the donor twin due to abnormal communications between placenta of both twins. Second is that of the Barter syndrome. Barter syndrome is a rare autosomal recessive renal tubular disorder. The defective chloride transport in the loop of Hanel leads to fetal polyuria, resulting in severe hydramnios and premature delivery. Next, we will talk how the structural causes cause the polyhydramnios. All the structural causes of polyhydramnios like tracheal atresia, duodenal and esophageal atresia, mediastinal and thoracic mass, diaphragmatic hernia, Result in poor swallowing of amniotic fluid, resulting in polyhydramnios. How neuromuscular disorder causes the polyhydramnios? All the neuromuscular disorders like uh, causing uh, polyhydramnios like anencaphy, muscular dystrophy, fetal kinesia, affect the fetal swallowing, result in, resulting in increased amount of amniotic fluid. How the genetic conditions cause polyhydramnios. In chromosomal anomalies like Down syndrome, Adverse syndrome, and Pitau syndrome, you really the baby has got structural abnormalities like duodenal atresia or other blockage in the gastrointestinal tract, resulting in increased amount of lichen due to poor swallowing. Next come non-immune hydrops. 
In fetal hydrops, there is an imbalance of interstitial fluid production and the lymphatic return. Fluid accumulation in the fetus can result from congestive heart failure as well and from the obstructed lymphatic flow or decreased plasma oncotic pressure in case of the non-immune hydrops. Now, how the cardiac failure causes the polyhandromians? In severe conditions like sacrococcygeal teratoma, vein of gallal aneurysm, fetal anemia, maternal alloaminization, G6PD deficiency, alpha thalassemia, fetal maternal hemorrhage, there is high cardiac output cardiac failure resulting in an increased urine production and ultimately increased production of amniotic fluid. How different infections cause polyhydramias? The different infections causing polyhydramnios include congenital syphilis and viral hepatitis. There are several theories behind why infections like congenital syphilis and viral hepatitis cause polyhydramnios, but the proposed model is that of placentomegaly, which increases the production of amniotic fluid. So that was all about the pathophysiology of polyhydramnios. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote. Everyone wants to live on the top of the mountain, but all the happiness and growth occurs while you're climbing it. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.